Hello, my name is Quentin Robertson. I'm the director of the Urban Theological Institute here at the Lutheran Theological Seminary at Philadelphia. I oversee the Black Church Studies program. The Urban Theological Institute here at Lutheran Theological Seminary is the institute that oversees our black church concentration and it has three prompts. The first is our degree program and we have students in the MDiv, MAR, and MAPLE program. We also have students in the DMIN and PhD program, not necessarily a part of us, but they do have a black church focus in their studies. The second prompt is our certificate program and we have church leadership along with uh, Christian ministry. And then the third prom is our public program, which the city knows us for, Preaching with Power and the annual UTI lecture. In addition to me serving here at Lutheran Theological Seminary, I'm also the interim pastor at the Grace Baptist Church of Germantown. And that relationship is a very unique relationship. We have here at the seminary the Jeremiah Wright Endowed Chair in African American Studies. Uh, the Reverend Dr. Jeremiah Wright Sr was the former pastor of Grace Baptist Church of Germantown. And he was one of the first African-American graduates of Lutheran Theological Seminary of Philadelphia. Uh, upon the retirement of the Reverend Dr. G. Daniel Jones in 2013, I stepped in at the end of the year, which was December 2013, to serve as interim pastor. And I've been with them now for two and a half years. Um, they are close to calling a pastor, but it was a wonderful uh, invitation that the seminary to me received along with Quentin Robertson because of the relationship that the local church has with the seminary. Um, strong partnership, they have hosted Preaching with Power for about 30 years now. And so when they asked me to come, I thought I had to say yes. I mean, it was saying yes to the seminary and to the church at the same time. Currently, at the Lutheran Theological Seminary, under the auspices of the Black Church Concentration, we have 55 students enrolled in either the MDiv, MAR, MAPL program. Of that 55, I would dare say 35 are actually Baptist students. Um, the next number that would be highest would be AME, and that runs around maybe six or seven. And then it spreads, Church of God in Christ, non-denominational, there's even one or two ELCA students that also choose the UTI as a concentration. Yeah. Historically, uh, information given to me from the 80s and 90s is that the Urban Theological Institute had upwards to 50 to 60 students. When I arrived in 2009, it was around 20 students. So to be back past 50 again means we're back where we were. However, I was told back in the 90s, the largest percentage was AME. That number has changed um, in the last five years. And I think some of it has to do with Dr. Wayne Croft being on faculty, who's a Baptist pastor here in Westchester, Pennsylvania. And I think he's become a drawing card for us. And of the 35 Baptist students, approximately 10 are from Enon Tabernacle Baptist Church. That's a neighboring church here that we have partnered with in the last five or six years. They host the annual UTI lecture um, annual worship service every year. Approximately between 2003, 2004, uh, the family of the Dr. Jeremiah Wright Sr. was approached about endowing a chair in his honor. Um, when the family was approached about that chair, they said, well, if you honor our dad, we also want you to honor the Reverend Dr. J.Q. Jackson. He was a colleague of Dr. Wright here at the seminary, and he pastored also in Germantown, a church called Mount Zion Baptist Church of Germantown. And so there was already the UTI scholarship. We renamed it the J.Q. Jackson Scholarship. And then the fund name for the chair in African American Studies became the Jeremiah Wright Chair. Those are the two major funds. When we do the annual UTI lecture in the fall, funds are raised for the Jeremiah Wright Chair. When we have the annual Preaching with Power, funds are then raised for the J.Q. Jackson Scholarship. It was in 2012 that we said, we have a strong partnership with the Reverend Ernest C. Morris, who's bishop in the Church of God in Christ, pastor of the Mount Airy Church of God in Christ. He was our former chair for the advisory board for UTI. And we approached him about a scholarship in his name. And so a fund was established at Preaching with Power in 2012 in his honor. And 
that fund is under the auspices of UTI, but it's specifically for Church of God in Christ students. And that fund supports all degree students who are members of the Church of God in Christ. Last fall, we celebrated the 35th anniversary of the Urban Theological Institute here at Lutheran Theological Seminary. Um, the entire 35 years the Reverend Dr. James Pollard has taught here at Lutheran Theological Seminary. One of his courses that he teaches is African Presence in Scripture. He has bequeathed to us in his will a gift of $100,000 to support that course in perpetuity. And so even though he may not teach it 20 years from now, the course will continue because of his gifts to the seminary. Let me say that Lutheran Seminary has always had an outreach, an ecumenical arm at the institution. It had it prior to the appearance of the Urban Theological Institute, but I would say over 35 years ago when the Urban Theological Institute was established here, that really became the outreach, the ecumenical arm of Lutheran Theological Seminary. And what will happen is that students across denominational lines have come to Lutheran to study. And it's been beneficial because our Lutheran students are in the same classroom that the students from other denominations are in, and they learn from each other. I graduated from a seminary that's called Interdenominational Theological Seminary. So I've experienced what it is to have multiple denominations with different viewpoints. And the thing that always sticks out to me is there are some denominations who baptize babies. There's other denominations that do not. I think there's pros and cons on both. But you never know it if you're not in the classroom to discuss that with someone else. There's other ones, but that's one of the biggest ones that stands out to me. Um, do you dedicate the baby or do you baptize the baby? Um, how governance is? Are you a congregation that's overseen by a presbyter, by a bishop, or is it congregational led? And those are things that you learn by being ecumenical. Our numbers have grown from the 22 when I first arrived to 55 at this present time in the black church concentration. Preaching with power has grown. We've raised annually somewhere around $18,000 a year when I first came, upwards to now $30,000 a year. But tuition has also increased. And so what we try to do for those 55 students, we try to give them aid, every single one of them. And so if we keep gifts at the same amount, we can't give but so much. The more we raise, the more we can give. So we always are asking people to consider sending a donation to help students in the black church concentration here at Lutheran Theological Seminary. L let me add that I have been um, added as a faculty member in addition to my administrative role. And Dr. Crawford and I are now crafting a course called Church Administration in the Black Church Perspective. And the reason that becomes important is uh, it's a course that I could have taught theoretically I have an MBA. I could have talked about management, how to manage people, how to manage budgets. But unless you are in the pastorate and doing it, <laughs> it's just theoretical. My two and a half years at Grace has given me real experience of what it is to manage what we call volunteers. Because the majority of churches, it's volunteer work, managing a church budget. And so what Dr. Croft and I have become are examples to our students of what the really future looks like for those in ministry. That 90%, if not more, you will have a job outside of the church in addition to the church. That you will work on a regular job, nine to five, and you will pastor a congregation. The average congregation statistics tell us is 75 people. Churches with 75 people, 100 people, they may not be able to afford a full-time pastor. And when you think of full-time pastor, you're not just talking about salary, you're talking about benefits, you're talking about pension, health insurance. And so when a pastor can have a regular job that provides those things, it helps the church to really do ministry and not put so much burden on paying a pastor a full-time salary. And so I think we've become examples of that. And my experience as interim pastor has really helped inform me on how to show that as a true example to the students now. I would like to say that for the Urban Theological Institute, 
our best days are yet ahead. As theological education has changed over the last 10, 20, even 30 years, um, the typical student who quits a job and comes full time, maybe 10%, 20% of the population, the majority of students now are maintaining their jobs, they're maintaining their families, and still studying. And that's what the Urban Theological Institute established here at Lutheran Seminary over 35 years ago. And so I see us as a continuation of growth in the years ahead. What we would like to see, though, is more students come and see that you do not have to be full-time in order to study to get a Master of Divinity degree. And that needs to be communicated more. I still think when the persons hear the word seminary, they think, oh, pack your pass, quit, roll up, camp out for three or four years somewhere. Seminary today is, no, keep your job, come take a class here, do a class online, and you can still, it may take you longer than three years, it may take you five or six years, but you can do it now. That's the future, and I really think that's the growth of the Urban Theological Institute and Lutheran Theological Seminary as we partner together.